leader-based sequence Paxos. After designing the ballot-based leader election, we will design a leader-based sequence Paxos in a number of steps. Any proposed command will be now forwarded to the leader. This allows proposals to be pipelined asynchronously, and most proposals will take one round trip with minimal contention under good network conditions. So let us remember our assumptions. We assume an eventual leader election abstraction with a ballot number, which is a ballot-based leader election, so we have a leader as an indication event. And as we know, the ballot leader election satisfies completeness and eventual accuracy, and also monotonically increasing unique ballots. The leader-based PAX is optimized in the case where we have a single proposer that runs for a longer period of time, and thus it will not be reported for a while, and it always guarantees safety. So we know that. So let us look again to the state of the proposer. So we have a set of proposers. One of them will be elected as a leader. And a proposer will be either a leader or a follower. So this is the leader state and this is the follower state. And whenever a leader crashes or could be overrun by another leader, it moves to a follower state. And a leader will be either in a prepare state or an accept state. These two states correspond to the two phases of sequence paxos. Sequence paxos always start in a prepare phase, the proposer, and then moves to an accept phase. And that will continue until that leader is overrun by a higher leader, and in this case moves to be a follower. So here is the algorithm that we had so far. A proposer starts a prepare phase and collect promises and sequences from a majority. If it is accepted by a majority, it will take the sequence at the highest round number and adopt it and extend it. And then it starts the accept phase. That's where it extends the current sequence with new proposals. And once it gets a majority of accepts from the acceptors, it can decide. So the basic idea is that once a proposal becomes a leader, it does the prepare phase once, and then does multiple accepts. First accept, after synchronizing with the acceptors, and subsequent accepts when it gets new commands from the clients. So here is an outline of the solution. We said that the current sequence package is inefficient with multiple concurrent proposals, conflicts and restarts are likely, two rounds of messages for each value chosen, one round for prepare and the next round for accept. The solution, as we said, we pick a leader with a unique higher number or higher round number, and this is done by the leader election algorithm. Now, the leader acts as a sole proposal for the current round, this round N. We do a prepare, we get a majority of promises from the acceptors. Now, after this prepare, and if the leader is not aborted, it performs only accepts. And this accept happens when it gets new command and extends its sequence. And it does that until it is aborted. And it will get aborted if a new leader takes over with a higher round number. Now, what is the benefit of this? First, a proposal does prepare only once before the first accept. After he does the prepare, he exactly knows the state of a majority of acceptors. So after that, only one round trip is needed to decide on an extension of the sequence V, the sequence that is sent in the first accept, as long as the round is not aborted. And it gets aborted if we have another leader with a higher number. So this solution allows first the ability to do multiple accepts. So you can pipeline accept. As long as you get a command, you just send it to the acceptors. And this as a whole will give us a lower proposed to decide latency for multiple proposals. 
So this will be the period where you send multiple accepts. You are getting accepted message or acknowledge of the accept from the acceptors, and then you're sending the decide. So if there are if there are multiple new commands coming, the latency for even for multiple command will just be the one round trip going to the acceptors. So let us see how we decide on a chosen sequence here. And we go back to our ballot array. So we say that a sequence V is chosen in round N if acceptors in a majority set, so it's a majority of acceptors, have accepted in round N sequences that have V as a prefix. So if we look to round two, a chosen sequence is a sequence consisting solely of C2. If we now move to round five, and round five here, we are going to have a new leader, the leader running in round five. What we can see, first of all, at the prepare phase, he is going to get the sequence C2 and adopt it because sequence C2 is chosen. And then he's going to extend C2 by C3. And so just here, the sequence C2, C3 is chosen. At this point, the sequence C2, C3, C1 is chosen because the leader extend his sequence by C1 and send this sequence to the acceptors. And here's a situation where this sequence is not chosen. What happens possibly is the proposer proposed also C4, but he got interrupted by a higher leader. So his accept command went only to one of the acceptors, in this case to P3. So after first accept, we allow issuing and accepting multiple proposals in round N. So now we are accepting multiple proposals in the same round. This is new. This is not the single value Paxos. This is not vanilla Paxos or even the vanilla sequence Paxos. We have now multiple values V issued in the same round. So an acceptor accept longer sequences in the same round as long as we accept longer sequences, as long as the round number is higher or equal to the promise of the acceptor. This is very important. So now let us look to the prepare phase at round N when a proposer becomes a leader. So when a proposer becomes a leader due to the leader election algorithm, at this stage, N is the highest known proposal number. Of course, this proposer, which becomes a leader, might be aborted by a leader with a higher number. That's fine. But another thing we know from the leader election algorithm is that N is unique. Since only one leader is elected with a given number N, and N is higher than the previous rounds of previous leaders. We know that. Now, after successful completion of the prepare phase, so the leader will have a sequence v0 and this sequence has the following invariant so the longest chosen sequence at any lower round m prime will be a prefix of v0 we are at round n any chosen sequence at a lower round than n will be a prefix of v0 and let us see this in the ballot array structure so here is an interesting situation. If we look to round two, what is the chosen sequence or the longest chosen sequence? The longest chosen sequence at round two is in fact the sequence C2 only. So C3 is not part of that. C3 is not part of that because there's no majority that having C3. Therefore, the longest chosen sequence is C2. Now, after the prepare phase, after the prepare phase, what the leader have, the leader, if he chooses these two acceptors, he will actually have this sequence because we always adopt the longest sequence with the highest number. If the number is the same, we choose the one with the longest sequence. And that is really what is our invariant, which says the proposer at this point, 
the sequence that he got after the prepare phase will have any chosen sequence as a prefix. Now he can extend this sequence and send it to the acceptors and extend the sequence by, say, by C1 here and here again he extends again by C4. But so at this stage, the chosen sequence is C2, C3, C1. This sequence is not yet chosen. So again, because this is very important, this property is important, that the sequence after the prepare phase at the leader or the proposer has all chosen sequences as prefixes. So before round five, we said the longest chosen sequence is C2. At round five, just after the prepare phase, the new leader has C2, C3 because he chose this quorum, this quorum, C2, C3. And the leader will impose this sequence on all acceptors and extend the sequence. So let's look now to accept in round N in the proposal behavior. So what the proposer or the leader does, it will issue multiple proposers at round N extending this sequence that it got at the prepare phase. So it starts with this and extend this sequence still with the number N. So it's round number still N. And the proposer guarantees by extension that V0 is a prefix of V1, V1 is a prefix of V2. The very important thing, he does not wait for one proposal to be chosen before extending and issuing the next proposal. So he just do it. Uh, he just do all these extension and send these messages. And continues like that until aborted. Next to look is to look to the acceptor behavior. So this is now the proposal behavior when he is doing accepts in round N. Now we will look to the acceptor behavior in round N. So now we are here. The proposer, which is the leader, sent multiple accepts. And now we are looking at the unacceptor behavior. So the first thing we do is that we order proposals in the following way. So a proposer with a round number n, v is less than another proposer, n prime, v prime. Of course, if n is less than n prime, and in case they are the same, then if the length of v prime is longer than v, and also v is a prefix of v prime. So the acceptor extends its accepted sequence when it receives a new proposal, as long as it is higher proposer according to the ordering above. Observe messages at this stage, messages could arrive in a different order. We didn't say anything about the order of accept messages. But it has to preserve this. It will accept any proposer as long as it satisfies this ordering. Now, if that is fine, what is the acceptor is going to send in his acknowledgement? So accepted messages will in fact include the length of accepted value. That is enough. He, he cannot just say I accept. He has to include the length of the accepted value because since we have multiple outstanding accept, accepted request reply pattern that can be delivered out of order. So are we are going to look to this carefully on the next slide. So here is, we are now looking to the acceptor. He accepts in round N, the acceptor behavior. Okay, for an acceptor, we say that VAQ is the value accepted at acceptor Q. And VPL is the value VP at the leader, which is a proposer. After the acceptor Q accepted the proposal sent by the leader, it must be the case that the value or the sequence at the acceptor is a prefix of the sequence at the proposer. Why is that? Because we have the accept, accepted request reply pattern. He sent this value and he sent that accepted message. So the value arriving here must be less than the value here at the proposer. So which means that the proposer, in this case we call it the leader L, can always recreate the value of the acceptor from its current value. This is the value of the leader. Basically, by saying the value at acceptor Q is the prefix of my sequence with the length that is sent from the acceptor. Hope this is clear. 
the value sent here. Here he says, I have a sequence of lengths five. The proposer knows that this means that the first five element of my sequence is the, the elements that the acceptor has. And that's why we say the value at the acceptor is a prefix of the value at the leader indexed by a prefix indexed by this number. So here is what the acceptor then does. When it gets an accept, a round number, and a value V, from a proposer P, which is the leader, if the proposer is still a leader, and this we get it from here, he will update the promise here, and then it will accept the longest sequence according to the ordering that we talked about earlier. So it will compare the value that it got from the current value that it has around according to the ordering we said. We take the max of this and that will be the value at the acceptor. And then it's going to send the length of that sequence. So this is really now a description of the behavior of the acceptor